out today to celebrate with us is also Juneteenth. Which is a celebration of freedom on this very day back in 1865. Amen. 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 Father's Day. You know, I'm, I'm so thankful and grateful to be a father. And I grew up in a neighborhood in Cleveland, Ohio, where a lot of uh, young men didn't have fathers. And I didn't realize at that time the importance of having a father in my life. But as I grew older, I really began to appreciate the fact that I had a father in the home, amen? amen? Father's Day is a celebration honoring fathers, celebrating fatherhood, paternal bonds, and the influence of fathers in society. The idea of Father's Day was conceived more than a century ago by a young woman named Sonora Dodd of Spokane, Washington. Now, Sonora Dodd wanted a special day to honor her father. His name was William Smart, and he was a widowed Civil War veteran who was left to raise his six children on a farm. The first celebration of Father's Day was in Spokane, Washington at the YMCA on June 19, 1910. In 1966, President Lyndon B. Johnson issued the first presidential proclamation honoring fathers, designating the third Sunday in June as Father's Day. Six years later, the day was made a permanent national holiday when President Richard M. Nixon signed it into law in 1972. And here we are. Happy Father's Day. Amen. This sermon I'm about to share with you is titled Faithful Men planted. Faithful men planted. It's a, a sermon I preached many years ago and I see more today that it is needed and applicable. The Lord put on my heart to share it again with you. Amen. Our scripture reading comes to us from the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms. And if you have your Bibles and you're able to stand, please stand for the reading and hearing of God's holy word. The book of Psalms. Psalm number one. And verse number one. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scorn. Thank you. You may be seated. The grass withers and the flowers fade. But the word of our God will stand forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I think I can say without fear of successful contradiction that one of the most beloved books in the Bible is the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms is named Tehillim in Hebrew. There are no chapters 
in the Psalms. The Psalms are numbered because the entire book of Psalms is a book of music. It's the Hebrew hymn book. It's a, a book of songs, hymns of praise and prayer unto the Lord. There are psalms of lament where they are in deep sorrow. And there are imprecatory psalms where the psalmist is asking God to kill his enemies. <laughs> I particularly like those psalms. And then there are psalms of praise and psalms of excitement where God has delivered them and they are glad. It's, it's, it's music and, and you can't really marshal an army without music. You can't move a people without music. But this sacred music of God's people, it's, it's almost impolite to listen to them because their music is so close to their experience. But for a moment, let's just tip in and listen to some of the music they sing in their festivals and their feasts. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Booths. They sang this music in their festivals in their pilgrimages. So let's just follow along and listen to their music. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. That's beautiful, beautiful music. Even people that don't go to church, they know this one. The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. I shall not want. Amen. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Come on, you can help me sing it if you know it. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's beautiful, beautiful music. I bet you know this one. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Excuse me. All generations. That's beautiful, beautiful music. But this Psalm number one, the music of Psalm number one, especially verse number one, gives us the characteristics of a faithful man planted. Blessed is the man who does not walk, who does not stand, who does not sit. Look, 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 look at that progression. 
He does not stand. He does not walk. He does not sit. If you walk with them, it won't be long before you stand with them. Look at these characteristics of this faithful man of God. He walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. When you read the word of God, it gives you the true characteristics of a man of God, a faithful man of God, and what he ought to look like. He is blessed if he does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Brothers and sisters, hear me. If you walk with them, it won't be long before you believe like them. Walking with them makes you believe like them. You know, it's, it, it, it's, it, it's hard to get away from the, the way you were raised. It's, 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 it's hard to get away from how you were brought up. Uh, my parents raised uh, six children, three boys and three girls. And I was kind of in the middle. I had an older sister and an older brother, and I had a younger brother and two younger sisters. <coughs> and my parents would always tell us, uh, whenever we left the house, they would say, listen, don't uh, uh, hang around with the wrong crowd. Amen? I know, I know your parents, some of your parents probably shared that with you too. Don't, don't hang around with the wrong crowd because you might get into something. You can't get out of, and, and they and they would tell us this. And uh, one summer, I remember, uh, I was out of school. We were out of school. We were on vacation, and uh, I was out in the neighborhood. And these guys saw me, and they were from the neighborhood, and they knew me. And they said, "Eddie, uh, come go with us. Uh, we we're, we're going over here, and we're gonna uh, uh, rob this man and separate him from his valuable." I said, uh, "Man, man, what you talking about? Se separate him from?" Come, come go with us. I say, man, I, 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 I'm not going to do that. And before I could get those words out of my mouth, uh, one of the other guys that was with him said, what's the matter? Are you scared? And I said, no, man, I, I'm not scared. I'm not just going to do that. Right. And, you know, I just, I just went on my way, and, I, and they went their way. And I don't know to this day whether or not they went to that man's house to rob him. But what I do know is that whenever my feet were quick to rush into mischief, I would hear my parents say, don't, don't, don't get involved with the wrong crowd. Amen? That's right. Uh, one, of, one, of, one of my mentors, uh, Pastor Terry K. Anderson of the Lily Grove Missionary Baptist Church in Houston, uh, his parents would pray for him and his family. And, and he says uh, his parents would, would put it like this. They said, uh, they would say, Lord, if you see my children going in the way I didn't raise them, catch them by the reins of their minds and turn them around before it's a day and a time too late. Mark death and judgment across their path and bid them no further to go that way. And when my parents were telling me uh, not to get mixed up with the wrong crowd, they were asking the Lord to mark death and judgment across my path and bid me no further to go that way. If you walk with them, if you get in their company too long, you're going to start to believe like them. Hear me, brothers and sisters. I, I don't care what anybody tells you. It matters what you believe. It truly matters what you believe. Now, there are some things that just don't matter to me. For example, uh, what color the carpet is in the church. Uh, that doesn't really matter to me. Uh, or, or what color you wear on Men's Day or Women's Day, uh, uh, or whether you wear a black or white suit or a black or white dress. So those things don't matter to me. Or whether uh, you wear a corsage, whether it's alive or dead. That don't matter to me. But I, I, I mention these examples because churches have split over these foolish notions. Amen? Amen? But there are some things for me that are non-negotiable. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God without sin. 
I believe he was born on a, of a virgin. I believe he died on the cross. I believe he rose from the grave. I believe he is seated at the right hand of God with power. And I believe he is coming back. And those things for me are non-negotiable. And it matters Amen. what you believe. Because what you believe separates Christianity from Eastern mysticism. It separates Christianity from impersonal idealism and evolutionary naturalism. It separates Christianity from all the other so-called religions of the world. Jesus Christ is Savior and Lord, and I believe that, and if you believe it, it's enough to save you. If you don't walk with them, you won't believe like them. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Because if you walk with them, it won't be long before you believe like them. Nor stands in the way of sinners. If you walk with them, you'll believe like them. And if you stand with them, you'll behave like them. If you walk with them, you'll believe like them. And if you stand with them, you'll behave like them. You'll behave like them. Your conduct says a whole lot about what you believe. Belief should always correspond with how you behave. What you believe dictates how you act. Those of us who are over the age of 50 can help me testify here. And uh, brothers and sisters, don't get offended uh, when I talk about old age. I don't know who said this getting old was a good idea. I, I, I'm going in the old age kicking and screaming. Uh, I, I don't like nothing. I don't like nothing about getting old. There's nothing exciting to me about getting old. So stay young as long as you can because when you get up here where I am, I, I'm 70 years old. You're looking for looking your glasses, good, good. and they're on your face. Yeah. You're looking for your car keys, and they're in your hand. Yeah. You walk into a room yeah. <laughs> and yeah. say, what in the hell did I come in here for? Yeah. Somebody ought to help me testify here. Amen. 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 You know, again, uh, my mentor, Pastor Terry K. Anderson of Lily Grove Missionary Baptist Church, uh, he had been asked to speak at a church and after he had finished speaking, he went to a restaurant. And uh, uh, in this restaurant was a, a lovely young woman. A lovely young woman was his servant. And she kept looking at him and he kept looking at her. And she came to bring him his tea and he said, thank you. And uh, she went on and came back and kept pouring the tea and he said, I got it sweet the way I wanted, baby, thank you so much. And she kept coming back, looking at him, and he was looking at her. And then she came and admired his glasses and said, your gold tea is so handsome, and you're just such an attractive man. And he said, when she said that, his chest stuck out, and his head popped up, and she kept looking at him, and he kept looking at her. He said, but then the spirit spoke to him. And he said, honey, let's shuck this corn right down to the cow. I'm on three blood pressure medications, and I ain't about to let you put me in the hospital. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, it's not about manhood. It's about godly integrity. Amen. It's not a question Amen. of manhood. It's a question of godly integrity. I have to live with myself and so I want to be fit for myself to know. I want to be able, as days go by, always to look myself straight in the eye. I don't want to stand with the setting sun and hate myself for the things I've done. I don't want to keep on a closet shelf a lot of secrets about myself and fool myself as I come and go into thinking that nobody else will know the kind of man I really am. I don't want to dress myself up in a sham. What you believe translates into how you behave.
Because if you don't walk with them, you won't believe like them. Amen. And if you don't stand with them, you won't behave like them. Amen. But brothers and sisters, this last one. Blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Amen. If you don't walk with them, you won't believe like them. Nor stands in the way of sinners. If you don't stand with them, you won't behave like them. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Because if you sit with them, you belong to them. You believe like them, you behave like them, and if you sit with them, you belong to them. Brothers and sisters, people ought to be able to tell the difference between a man who goes to church and a man who doesn't go to church. Come on now. Your, right. your, your right. walk, your gait, your conversation, your attitude, yep. your way of living ought to tell people, yep. I don't belong to this world. Right. The Lord says, come out from among them and be separated, says the Lord. That word separated does not, does not mean better. It means different. I'm not better than them. I'm just different from them. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I try to live my life in a way that gives God glory. I try to live my life in a way that pleases Almighty God. Because when it's all over, he won't call me minister. He won't call me pastor. He'll say, servant of God, well done. If you don't walk with them, you won't believe like them. And if you don't stand with them, you won't behave like them. And if you don't sit with them, you won't belong to them. I've lived my life trying to do what the Bible says, walking not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standing in the way of sinners, nor sitting in the seat of the scornful. I've tried to walk upright. I've tried not to stand with them, because if you stand with them, it won't be long before you sit with them. The story of Abraham and Lot. Lot was Abraham's nephew, and Abraham and Lot were about to part company because there was a falling out among their herds. And Abraham said to Lot, let's not fall out. We have a common enemy in the land. We are brothers. Let's not have a disagreement amongst ourselves. Rather than fall out, you take the land you want, and what you leave, that will be my land. And Lot chose the high lands of Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham chose the low lands of Mamre. And, you know, that disappoints Abraham for a while until God tells him, don't be discouraged about Lot choosing the high lands of Sodom and Gomorrah because pretty soon this town is about to go up in smoke. This land has been angelically tagged for demolition. It's going to go up in smoke in a minute. Don't worry about Lot in the highlands of Sodom and Gomorrah and you being in the lowlands of Mamre. The land that Lot is about to go, the land that Lot is in is about to go up in smoke. And so Lot takes a lawn chair and sits downtown in the gate of Sodom and Gomorrah, in the town that's about to go up in smoke. Because he walked with them, he stood with them, and eventually he sat with them. And when God gets ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he tells Abraham to tell Lot to come out from there and him with him and his family. And Lot takes his family and they are headed out of Sodom and Gomorrah. But Mrs. Lot had to have one more look. She had to see the club one more time. She had to see the bright lights one more time. And she turned around and looked and she turned immediately into a pillar of salt. And historians say that on that very spot where Lot's wife was turned into a pillar of salt is where the Dead Sea rests even until this day. And nothing lives in the Dead Sea because it's so salty. That's where Lot's wife was turned into a pillar of salt. Because if you walk with them, you'll start to believe like them. And if you stand with them, you'll start to behave like them. But if you sit with them, sooner or later, you're going to belong to them. 
Amen. My brothers and sisters, there's something that I want you to know about me today, and that is I belong to the Lord. Amen. I am a Amen. child of God. If anybody asks you who I am, tell them I'm a child of God because I know Amen. who Jesus is. Amen. Jesus Amen. is the Son of God without sin, and he is the Son of Man with power, and I loudly proclaim that I love the Lord because Amen. he heard my cry. Amen. He pitted my groans. As long as I live and trouble rise, I will hasten until his throne. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God until salvation. I'm not embarrassed to be a Christian. And I want everybody to know I'm on the Lord's side. He brought me from a mighty long way. And as long as I live, I'm not going to walk with the ungodly. I'm not going to stand in the path of sinners nor sit in the seat of the scumble. Because if you walk with them, it won't be long before you believe like them. And if you stand with them, it won't be long before you behave like them. And if you sit with them, it won't be long before you belong to them. In conclusion to this Father's Day message entitled, Faithful Men Planted. During these COVID-19 pandemic times, a man's faith is being severely tested. Brothers and sisters, we live in a fallen world, and that is why a godly man must be a faithful man planted. These seeds that you have planted in this 2022 pandemic will long be remembered by not only your children, but all children as well. Faithful men planted. How will you apply this message to your life today? What is it that you want your children, grandchildren, or even your great-grandchildren to know about the way that you lived your life? Will you leave a spiritual legacy for all children to see? What is it that you loudly proclaim? And whose side are you on? Listen, brothers, we have to walk with God. Amen? We have to walk with Jesus because if you walk with Jesus, You'll believe like Jesus. Amen. And if you Amen. stand with Jesus, Amen. you'll behave like Jesus. Amen. And if you sit with Jesus, Amen. you'll belong Amen. to Amen. Jesus. Amen. And brothers, if you do these things, God will bless you to become the fathers that he has called you to be. Amen. 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 I hope you got some out of the word of the Lord Amen. today on this Father's yes, Day. Amen. God bless you. Yes. God bless you. Amen. 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 Let's get a round of hand for you.